Greetings and welcome to the postpartum video. This is the last video in the series. So let's come on over to the mat. And there's a number of things you can do uh, successfully postpartum. If people have been with you in your prenatal class, which most likely they will have been, you can do a little more. So I wanted to start uh, with the moon salutation, and this really is an underused salutation. It's especially good for women, it's especially good uh, postpartum because it brings in that uh, flow, but yet there's a very deep focus inward and relaxation with the moon salutation. So I'll just do one side of it. I'll just use my blanket. We're going to work with the blanket. So you come in and you've done your opening and all of that. You extend up. I like to have a temple position with my fingertips. It gives people more grounding. You can do this as well. My preference is here. So, you just move over to the right, extend. And just taking your time at first, and then you can develop a faster flow. And then, you're going to step out. So we'll go to goddess pose. And traditionally, fingers are pointed up. I kind of like this. You know, like we're pushing up the sky. It's really very nice. But here is fine too. And you want to, this is a very wide half squat. Perfect. And then we go into triangle pose. So a very simple move of the feet. Very connected. Now we can get a little lower here. Yeah, you don't want this. And we're not going to use the block at the moment, but we just want to stay high enough, below the knee, above the ankle somewhere. And you can make, you know, do your cues. Then we're going to turn, move into pyramid pose. And just relaxing over. So we get to do this forward bend. Um, just making sure that no one is straining the back of the knee or the hamstring, but just get the spine relaxed. Then we're going to move into a nice elongated lunge. So the foot might have to come out a little bit. And you'll rest the knee down. You have your blanket if people need to pad their knees. Coming up and extend. And then coming down. Now you're going to bring your hands to the inside of the foot. Then we're going to move into a squat, turning over, extending the leg, get a nice dynamic stretch for the, the back of the right leg. Have everybody make their adjustments. I always say keep this heel up, even if you can bring it down, it puts a lot of pressure on the back of the uh, ankle. And you do both sides, of course. And you can come back to the original side. Then we move into lunge. Move it around. You can bring the knee down. You can keep the knee up as well. And then come up. You can have people put their hands here on the thigh if they prefer that. Come up and extend. And then come forward. Coming into your lunge, pyramid pose. Other. Triangle, adjust the back foot, hand here, now back to God's pose, here or here. And then you can do the other side. Excellent flow, build stamina. Even going that slowly, it really helps with the cardio work. So start to bring that in. And if you want something a little different, and this is in your PDF, and I'm going to follow along now uh, for the PDF. Coming up, exhaling, exhaling. Coming all the way down to squat. 
Now, heels up or down, we don't care. But you can just make this your flow. And up. And down. You can just make it two breaths. And people do not have to stay together for this. And then end up in your squat. And then we're going to transition. Now, we're going to use a bolster. And during pregnancy, even though we really encourage our students to lift up, to have an open chest, to open the um, armpits, turn the hands open when they do mountain pose, there's still a lot of rounding. So we're gonna counteract that. You're gonna roll your blanket. So you don't wanna use a bolster for this. It's very, very low, it's a low bolster. And we're gonna start out simply with goal post arms. So you come down here, right around the nipple line, and then you bend your elbows. Now, depending on people's backs, straight or, or bent, just depends. If you suspect that um, someone has a diastasis, you know how to check for it. And then if you want more extension, you straighten the arms, straighten the legs, and relax over the bolster. So our breath here, you take an inhale, and you press that in breath right up against the bolster so the back here starts to wake up. It's asleep. This part of the back is hard to wake up. So you inhale, exhale, extend and drape the upper back. So there's a push on the inhale right up against the blanket and then there's a draping over that small bolster. If people have asthma or suffer from asthma, this is awesome to do. It's not exaggerated. You don't want people over those large bolsters. To come off, we always roll to one side and we always push up. You can start your postpartum class with that, then go into moon salutations and coming into some of the other work that we'll be doing. So. I want to just bring in the ball here too. So we're going to stretch the abdominal muscles. I have a, my small one for me. Medium size, as I said, is probably the best for most people. <clears throat> we're going to come into a supported back bend. Coming here, walking forward, and then start to drape. So my hands can come easily to the floor in this fall. The medium size is a little challenging for me. So you walk, keep walking the feet out and the ball naturally comes up over the spine. I can walk out a little more and then I can really get some support here in that upper back. Now I can keep my arms here perfectly fine. I can bring my arms around and stretch and really get the spine draped, letting go. And I'm getting this massive stretch here for the transverse muscles, the rectus abdominis, and some of the um, obliques. And then to come off, we roll and come up. So it's an awesome way to do a backbend and to introduce your postpartum students to a backbend. And then after that, if people's backs feel a little tight, you can come to the wall, the back, your back is up against the wall, and just breathe right into it. Come into bow pose, and just relax for a moment. All right, let's move on. And in your postpartum class, you want to start slowly and you want to observe people's posture and um, how they're moving postpartum. Some people may feel very empty in this area, as I said in 
in the module, and they really need to start breathing into that area and waking it up because it's been occupied by somebody else and women need to reclaim it again, and that's a very good start to wake it up. And also the abdominal work. You can bring in the abdominal work. And what we're gonna look at now is the curl, and we all know about the curl. Let me just make sure I'm going in sequence here. Yeah, so there are several levels of the curl. Oh, it's excellent for postpartum. As I said, you want to make sure that no one has a severe diastasis because you don't want to make it worse. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to come to my elbows. Okay. And I'm going to draw my ribs together. The rectus abdominis draws together. And then, if I can, I'm going to place one hand right back here and then the other hand. Now, it might be too much to be this low. Um, this is the most challenging position. Uh, you can come to that position from uh, up here too, rolling down and walking down. And then lift an inch and then go back an inch and lift an inch and then go back. So, if that's too much, you can come, say, here, which is perfectly fine. This has less involvement for the back. And then, it's very easy to come into upward facing pose from there. So you can do your abdominal work and then just come into upward facing pose. And then, come to standing. And getting into some of the standing balances is fun, I think, in a postpartum class. So you can bring one leg up. And people can use a wall, people can use bell. But this is a time of kind of experimenting, right? Since they've been a little bit constricted. Um, this is great to bring in. So bringing the hand to the toe, or however you want to do it, knee bent or not, you know, extending or just staying here is fine. You want to give people the sense that they can rely on just one leg. Very important for motherhood. And then you can take it out, bring it in, and then down. So it's a nice challenging pose. You want to bring it, start to bring in some challenging work. So, now we're going to come down to the floor. One of my favorite balances to do, especially in uh, postpartum class, is something low to the floor that most people can do. So you bend one knee. Stand forward, the knee might be bent. Bring your hand to the outside of the foot, the extended leg, and then lift. So this is really, most people can make it this far. It's great. It builds stamina and confidence. And then if you want, you transfer the weight, bring the leg over a little bit, and then balance. And then down and you can take it into a forward bend. Good. Then you can come into a bound pose. Go up, and then do the other side. It's a great balance. Most people like it. It's fun because if you fall, you do not have far to go. You know? And then ending, this is always nice. Bringing a block underneath of it, the sacrum, you know, just extend the legs up, bringing it here, extending it up, and just relaxing here. And then you can bring the feet down, lift the hips, simple, come into bridge, press the elbows down, Get another stretch for the abdominal muscles, and then slowly come on down. 
knees in, and then you can go into Shavasana. So that's a really good sequence to do. I think people uh, really enjoy the flows postpartum a little bit more, and also they enjoy the forward bend. So I would put in a lot of forward bends in uh, my postpartum class, along with abdominal stretching and, of course, abdominal strength. So that's the postpartum video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, so this is the, the last video. And if you have any questions, just pop on Facebook and uh, ask the community or me, and I will get back to you. Thanks.